All right, we're back to the last two problems, and Ronald Coase won the Nobel Prize in Economics for his theory, which has been labeled now the Coase Theorem. And the Coase Theorem is a way in which private parties can solve externality problems without the government intervening. And it's clearly, obviously, very popular among conservatives, and it's a very appealing theory, so long as there are no transaction costs. And we'll talk about transaction costs in a minute. And the next two problems illustrate the Coase theory. And what the beauty of it is, is that regardless of who has the right to the property rights, the rights to basically enforce a liability on the other, you'll come to a solution because there's mutual gain to be achieved here. So let's go through it. It says, suppose the company A's railroad passes through farmer B's forced cornfield. The railroad causes an externality to the farmer because the railroad cars emit sparks that causes $1,500 in damage to the farmer's crops. So the railroad's going through this farmland. It gives off sparks. Sparks grabs that dry corn, causes damage. All right? There's a special soy-based grease that the railroads could purchase that would eliminate the damaging sparks. So you could put grease on certain areas where the sparks come from, and that would eliminate it. The grease, the grease costs $1,200. Suppose that the farmer has the right to compensation for any damages that his crops suffer. Assume there are no transaction costs. Which of the following characterizes an efficient outcome? So let me see if I back up. Railroad's going through. Railroad commits this kind of sparks. The sparks cause fire on, on the farm, but the farmer has the right to sue the railroad all right, for compensation. So if there's $1,500 in damage, the farmer can sue for $1,500 and get compensated for it. It costs $1,200 to get that grease. All right? Now, what's going to be the result? A, the railroad will continue to operate, but will pay the farmer $1,500 in damage. The railroad's going to say, the heck with it. I'm going to take my train through here. Sparks go off. You get damaged. Sue me. I'll pay you. It doesn't sound like the smartest answer. B, the railroad will purchase the grease for $1,200 and pay the farmer nothing because no crops damage will occur. Not bad. C, the farmer will incur a fifteen hundred damage to his crops. No, the farmer couldn't. The farmer has the legal right here to basically get compensation. So the farmer has the right, all right. So he's not going to basically accept fifteen hundred dollars in damage. The farmer will pay the railroad twelve hundred dollars to purchase the grease, so that no crop damage will occur. Well, the farmer wouldn't pay because the farmer has the legal right to sue and get and get compensation for the damage caused. So the farmer has no incentive to go and pay the particular railroad. The answer is B. The railroad, knowing that they'll be sued for $1,500 or cause $1,500 in damage, has an incentive to basically buy the preventive grease for $1,200, put it on, and have no crop damage. So here it is, right? The market has solved this because the railroad knows it's in their interest to put grease on because if they don't, they're going to get sued and it's going to cost them $1,500. Answer is B. Now let's flip it around. Let's say the farmer has no legal right. Number 10. So I'm sorry. The answer to number 9 is B. Let's go to number 10. Same question. Suppose a company in railroad passes through farmer's B cornfield, etc., etc. The railroad causes externality to the farm because the railroad emits sparks. It causes $1,500 in damage to the farmer's crops. There's a special soy-based grease. It's the exact same problem. Now, watch the, the wrinkle here. The grease costs $1,200. Suppose that the railroad is not liable for any damage caused to the crops. So now the railroad can go through the farmer's land, cause a fire, and it's not liable. And the judge says, it's not the, hey, farmer, you've got to protect yourself. I'm not going to charge the railroad for this. They're not liable. They have the right of that railroad. If a spark goes off, there's an externality, well, that's just too bad to you, the farmer. The farmer goes, well, that doesn't sound very good. So assume that there are no transaction costs. Which of the following characterizes an efficient outcome? So what's going to happen in this case? A, the railroad will continue to operate, but will pay the farmer $1,500 in damage. I doubt that. If the judge has ruled that the railroad has no liability here, there's no way the railroad, out of the goodness of their heart, is going to pay the, the farmer for damages. That's out. B, the railroad will purchase the grease for $1,200 and pay the farmer nothing because no crop damage will occur. Well, there's no incentive for the railroad here to go out and buy the grease themselves for $1,200 because they're not liable for anything. In other words, the judge is saying it's not your fault if a spark goes off, so don't worry about it. They're not going to worry about it. C, the farmer will incur 1,500 damages to his crop. The farmer throws his hands up and says, what can I do? I can't sue the railroad. I can't do anything. Basically, uh, I just have to eat the $1,500 loss myself. Possibility, right? 
Or D, the farmer will pay the railroad $1,200 to purchase the grease so that no crop damage will occur. And that's the answer, right? So the farmer will figure out and talk to the railroad and say, look, what would it cost me to basically buy this grease for you and have it installed on your train so it doesn't get to my crops? And the, and the railroad says, it's going to cost you, you know, $1,200 per car or something on the railroad. The farmer's going to say, oh, and if I don't do this and a spark comes off, it's going to cost me $1,500. So the farmer's going to pay the railroad $1,200 to put the grease on. Again, we achieve the same solution as we did in problem nine. The answer here then is D, which is the same result, that the grease goes on the railroads, the damage is limited to no crops, it costs $1,200 to put the grease on, the market has solved this problem, this externality problem, because property rights were clearly assigned. And then the two parties negotiate once they know who is to clear property rights. And so this is the Coase theorem says the market can achieve these outcomes. Now, what's the downside to this little miracle? There's nothing wrong with what I spoke with, with these, with, as this problem is laid out. The key here is that there's no transaction costs. All right? Transaction costs means the farmer has to basically sue the railroad, let's say, because he has the right. What's it going to cost the farmer to sue a railroad? It's going to cost the farmer to get a lawyer. The lawyer is going to take the, the railroad to court. The railroad will be fairly rich and powerful and have very powerful law firm defending it. They will drag it out in court, which will drag up the, la the legal fees for the farmer and basically make it prohibitive to go and sue the railroad. So transaction costs can make the Coase theorem not work or basically become too expensive to implement. Because if it costs, if the grease is 1200 bucks, and if the lawyer is going to cost this farmer $1,000, then it's going to cost the farmer $1,000 to hire the lawyer, all right? And the most he can get back in compensation is $1,500 from the railroad. The railroad's not going to put the grease on, and you'll see the coast there and breaking down because these transaction costs, the ability to force the legal property rights becomes so expensive that people, that the coast theorem breaks down. So that's what we have the government step in. The government would say, railroad or farmer, one of you has to basically do this. The government would say, railroad, put the grease on, pay the 1200 bucks. we'll tax somebody to compensate you, but that's going to be the cost of the externality, or you're going to have to basically charge your passengers extra money for their tickets in order to cover the cost of this externality. And that's really the answer, right? It gets built into the price, which is correct because you want the price to reflect the real cost of this particular behavior. This is driving a railroad through farmland, right? And if the price incorporates that, then the railroad will use the extra money from the price to basically put the grease on. They'll lose some customers. There may be less train traffic going through this because it's more expensive, but that is the optimal social solution, which takes into account the externality. All right, so we've done chapter 10, which is externality. Next week, we're going to do chapter 11, which is going to take this market failure to a new level. We're going to talk about public goods and the tragedy of the commons. Really good chapters. I'll see you next week.